Hello guys and welcome to the world of WWE. Today I'm doing my review for Survivor Series 2019, an incredible show, probably the best show all year since WrestleMania or Royal Rumble. Definitely in the top, in my top three for this year. Very much enjoyed it. But let's kick off. Let's kick off with the kickoff show. And there was the we had the ten man inter brand tag team battle. Well, so there was a bunch of tag teams from different brands and the. Winning teams will gain a point for their brand. The winning team with Don Sigal Robin Rude after they eliminated the Street Profits. It was a pretty good match. Uh, I thought at first the Street Profits were going to win, but no, they didn't. This was still really good, still really entertaining. So I very much enjoyed it. So, yeah, that's one point to Monday Night Raw. Next up, it was a triple threat into brand match for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. We had Leo Rush representing NXT. Defeated Akira Tozawa, who represents War, and Kalisto, who represents SmackDown, in a very good match, and it lasted 8 minutes and 20 seconds, just like the last one. It was a very cool match, yes, I would like the NXT Cruiserweight Championship to not be on Kicker Show, but I think it's only a short-term problem. I think it's going to end after this, because I think at the next TakeOver, which is in February, called TakeOver Portland, which, so, I don't even know what that is, so, yeah. I probably do, but I don't, if that makes any sense, so... Uh, then we're probably getting Angel Garza versus Leo Rush there. So that'd be cool. But yeah, Leo Rush won the match. He won the match after Kalisto hit his lead on his own. Kalisto is down. Leo Rush hit the final round on Kalisto to get the free count. Next up, it was the Viking Raiders, the War Tag Team Champions, defeating the SmackDown Tag Team Champions and the Young Dispute Era in a Champions Triple Threat Tag Team match in a very great Incredible first place 14 minute man. Everyone looked good. The New Day looked great. The Undisputed Era looked great. The Vikings looked great. And of course, the Vikings got the victory by pinning the Undisputed Era. It doesn't make the Undisputed Era look weak. So I can't complain. This was a great match. 14 minutes and 35 seconds. So, yeah. Let's kick off with the main show. We had Team NXT, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Candice Ray, Ia Shirai, and Tony Storm defeated Team War, which was Charlotte Flair, Natalia, Asuka, Kairi Sane, and Sarah Logan. Def and teams, of course, defeating Team SmackDown in the process. That means Sasha Banks, Carmella, Dana Brooke, Lacey Evans, and Nikki Cross in a 5 on 5 Survivor Series Triple Threat Elimination match. In a really good match. During the match, however, um, um, because it's believed. Because of the whole war, war games incident they had, or their paint match at war games, that Israel and Candice Ray had to be sent off, sent out to the back because they were injured. However, the match still continued, was on, but they were on like a three on, it was three on five on five. Nikki Cross, however, got eliminated by Bianca Bella by pinfall when um, Bianca Bella did the roll up, had her feet on the rope, we were really hold those feet in to get the victory. Then, Sarah Logan got eliminated by Bianca Miller by a splash and a pinful three count. Then, Carmella was eliminated by Charlotte Fair after being hit with a natural selection for the three count. Then, Kairi Sane was eliminated by Sutter Banks, which I don't really remember. All it says here is by pinful. So, yeah. Then, Danny Brooke got eliminated by Asuka by pinful, probably her kick thing. So, yeah. Then it was Charlotte Flair who got eliminated by Lacey Evans. I know it sounds weird. Basically, what happened was um, they asked a Charlotte Flair were arguing, and then um, then uh, uh, ask a spit green mist into Charlotte Flair, a women's wipe by Lacey Evans for the free count. Of course, Charlotte Flair is now eliminated. Then Asuka walked out, which means she was counted out. Next, Lacey Evans was eliminated by Natalia after like a roll up pinfall. Then Tony Storm got eliminated after Natalia and Sasha Banks were hitting their submission moves. Basically, Natalia had the sharp shooter on. Then Sasha Banks caught, decided to grab Tony Storm and hit the back statement while she, both submissions were on. It made sense, didn't make her look too weak. So, yeah. And sure. Uh, and they, uh, so Tony Storm got eliminated. Then the Alcarella got eliminated by Sasha Banks by Pinfall. Don't we remember that? Then Natalia, ba Natalia got eliminated by Sasha Banks, which was by Pinfall, which once again I don't really remember that. But then Sasha Banks got eliminated by Weir Ripley by Pinfall after Candice Away and Isha White came back uh, out to help give NXT the victory. So NXT is the first victory, which means one point for SmackDown, one point for War, and two points for NXT. So, 
So far, so good for NXT, and I was rooting for NXT, and I was happy by the end of it. That's a bit of a spoiler, so, yeah. Next up, it was no, no, NXT North American Champion Roderick Strong, who defeated AJ Styles, the United States Champion, and Shinsuke Nakamura, the Intercontinental Champion, who had Sami Zayn in his corner, a triple in a champion's triple threat match in a very good, very entertaining match. It ended after AJ Styles hit a phenomenal forearm on Shinsuke Nakamura. Roderick Strong tossed, uh, tossed AJ Styles out the ring, covered Shinsuke Nakamura for the free count. The match lasted 16 minutes, 45 seconds. By the way, the match before, the 5 on 5 on 5 women's Survivor Series triple threat elimination match was, lasted 28 minutes. So, yeah. This match, however, lasted 16 minutes, 45 seconds. It was a very good, very entertaining match. Next up, Adam Cole defeating Pete Dunne to retain his NXT Championship in 40 minutes and 10 seconds in probably match of the night. It was so entertaining, it was so good. Um, we had uh, Pete Dunne kicking out of the last shot, we had uh, Pete Dunne kick, um, Pete, Adam Cole kicking out of the uh, bitter end, we had a Panama Sun Sunrise on the ape, but it was just so good, but Adam Cole gets the victory, I very much enjoyed it, it was really good, so, yeah, uh, just go and check out this pay-per-view as a whole, it was really cool. So, yeah, and plus I like the length, it didn't feel too long. Next up, we had The Fiend Bray Wyatt defeating Daniel Bryan to retain his Universal Championship in 10 minutes, and 10 seconds. It sounds short, but that's kind of what these Bray Wyatt matches should be in the future. Daniel Bryan, even though it was only 10 minutes long, probably put the biggest fight out of everyone. And the best part is, he didn't make, the, Bray Wyatt didn't make the running knee look weak. He didn't just, he only, only one running knee is hit and he didn't just get up. He did up, get up off to the left. Yes, kicks of course. But with the knee, he kicked out. He where well, I kicked out it was a very cool match. It ended after he was got back down by was chanting basically I think he was chanting yes, he was actually chanting yes and then he hit the knee which Bray Wyatt kicked out. Then he was chanting yes to hit the other knee another knee, but uh, Bray Wyatt reversed into a mandible claw and he she, and he won the match. Very good match. Brought the yes moving back. I'm not sure this is a long term thing or after this match is gonna be like is the yes or true for me because I failed then? Will I succeed? Which I don't, I hope not. I think he's like, yes, yes, movement's back. And he should have a rivalry with Shinsuke Nakamura because that just makes the most sense out of the situation. And hopefully he take the title, but we will see. Where things go. Next up, we had Team Smackdown. Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, King Cole, Mustafa Ali and Shorty G defeating Team War, which was Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton and Ricochet. And also defeating Team NXT, which was Tommaso Ciampa, Damian Priest, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, and Walter. In a 5 on 5 on 5 Men Survivor Series Triple Threat Elimination Match. It was a very good match near the end. The star of it I wasn't a big fan of because Walter got eliminated in a few minutes by uh, Drew McIntyre after Claymore. Yes, he did put up a good fight, but it was still like a few minutes. Then, not long after that, Kevin Owens. Got eliminated Shorty G, which I'm fine with after a frog smash. Shorty G's pretty much already really. Then, not long after that, Kevin Owens got eliminated by Tommaso Ciampa. Then, not long, long after that, Damien Priest got eliminated by Randy Orton after RKO. Then, not long after that, Matt Widow eliminated Randy Orton after a roll up, and the crowd went crazy. I went crazy. That was actually a really cool moment, and they had a nice little fair. This is. But then, uh, right after he got hit with an RKO, King Kong went to cover Matt Widow for the 1 2 3. But, and then Braun Strowman got eliminated after um, Cle Drew McIntyre claymored uh, Braun Strowman, so he lost, he was counted out. Then Ricochet got eliminated by Ken Corbin, then Mustafa Ali got eliminated by Seth Rollins after Seth Mustafa Ali was on the world, the crowd was going crazy because it's his hometown. Then King Corbin pulled um, Mustafa Ali out because he was mad, then Roman Reigns got in it, then... I was Seth Ali pushed him, but when he came back in, he got hit with a stomp by Seth Rollins, who I was booing because I can't stand him anymore, and got eliminated. Then, then, um, then uh, King Corbin, then Roman Reigns hit a spear on King Corbin, and Tommaso Ciampa took the pit, got the pin for the one, two, three. So now the only members of um. Team NXT, Tommaso Ciampa and Seth Rollins, uh, Tommaso Ciampa, Seth Rollins, Tommaso Ciampa and Keith Lee, and there's Seth... Mm, wait, where's Drew, where's Drew McIntyre? 
Oh yeah, Drew McIntyre. Oh, I missed Drew McIntyre getting eliminated by Roman Reigns. Sorry, but yeah, that happened. That in the cool set of moves. So basically, it was two NXT guys versus one SmackDown guy and one War guy. And basically, um, Seth Rollins unfortunately eliminated Master Champ, which was a big, big bummer. I was booing because I was just like, really? So. Yeah, then Keith Lee became a star. Like, I mean, a star. And he was already a big star before, but now he's an even bigger star. Because he had a great showing against these other Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, two of the top guys. Unfortunately, Seth Rollins is. And he eliminated Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins in an incredible fashion. It was incredibly cool. So, yeah, then it was Keith Lee and Roman Reigns. Keith Lee was this close to being Roman Reigns. Then, when we hit two Superman punches, but there was a kick out, then Keith Lee, of course, hit that power bomb, which was on their fault. Then, when we hit a spear, which Keith Lee saw perfectly, get the victory. The match lasted 29 minutes and 25 seconds. Incredible! Roman Reigns is a sole survivor. Then, afterwards, Roman Reigns and Keith Lee had a fist bump because he realized, gosh, Keith Lee's great. Like, the man of Keith Lee's size shouldn't be doing the stuff he's doing, so they had a fist bump. It was a cool moment. Next up, Brock Lesnar defeated uh, Rey Mysterio, of course, well, well as had Paul Raymond in the score with a no holds back match for the WWE Championship. The match lasted seven minutes, the shortest match of the night. It wasn't bad, I enjoyed it at the moment. I think I enjoyed it at the moment, I thought it was good. But I don't see why they needed to get Dominic involved. Like, what was the point of getting Dominic involved? Just have a great match. Like, even just seven minutes of them destroying each other is fine. Basically, what happened was, um, uh, Dominic got, uh, came to the ring after Brock Lesnar was basically destroying Raven Steel and brought in a white towel to basically give him that he gives up, stop it. But then Brock Lesnar threw the white towel out, then he tried beating up Dominic there then. And, uh, Raven Steel hit a low blow on, um, Brock Lesnar then, then, uh, then uh, Dominic hit a low blow on Brock Lesnar, then they hit a double 619 and both hit despair. I thought that he was actually going to win them, but he didn't, which that was a cool moment. Then they were about to do a double splash onto the, uh, them, but then Brock Lesnar got, got out of the way quickly. German suplex Dominic off the top wave, then, ju then as when he still jumped to the top wave, he got caught in an F5 for the freak out. I found it enjoyable, entertaining, but can... And plus, compared we considering the main event, this was a bit, you know, there. Considering the what, it was good match, quite very enjoyable. But considering the build, and that Dominic wasn't going to be in because he was ill injured and stuff, it was a little disappointing. But I'm still okay with it. Next up, Shayna Baszler, the NXT Women's Champion, defeated the War Women's Champion Becky Lynch and SmackDown Women's Champion. Bailey by submission, a champions triple threat match. The match lasted 18 minutes and 10 seconds. It wasn't the best match. It was a good match though. It was nice and fast play. Um, uh, Shayna, uh, Shayna Baszler pretty much destroyed Becky on the outside, slammed onto a table. Then as they got Shayna Baszler and Bailey had a little uh, at near the end. Ba Bailey got locked. Shayna Baszler got uh, Bailey locked in and came through the clutch. Um, Bailey lost a while, that was quite good, but then she tapped out, Shayna basically got the victory, so that means the final results was one point for War, War got destroyed pretty much, um, Smackdown got two, NXT got four, so yeah, NXT wins, I was so happy, yes, NXT wins, hopefully this gives them more weight so they continue to beat AEW. I'm not saying AEW is a bad show, it's just not for me. And as kind of an NXT, huge NXT fan, I want them to do well and I want more people to watch it. That's just what it, it, it's about. The after match is Shay the Base was on the announce table. Announce table above that was in front of uh, Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch got up, attacked uh, Be Shay the Base and then hit a jump to the barricade. Off to hit a leg drop and Shayna Baszler through the table, then Becky Lynch stood So It was a really cool kind of ending, kind of showing that the wife is going to be continuing because Becky Lynch, he didn't believe she didn't get pinned or submitted, which means she didn't lose the match technically. But yeah, this was still a very good match, in my opinion. Apparently, I heard the news that Vince was disappointed. It wasn't even that bad. It was great to see women made a event in the show. 
very enjoyable. So yeah, overall this show was incredible. I would give it another 9 out of 10. Really good show. Very much enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and yet turn on notification. Never miss a video. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.